we are. I'm driving again. This is Highway 52, North Dakota, USA. And what happened, uh, I delivered uh, the last farm tractor uh, to a New Holland dealer in Estevan, Saskatchewan. And check the load board. Uh, there's nothing there that's, you know, you can make any money with. Uh, there was just some uh, hay, uh, very cheap. Like, I don't know, two bucks a mile to Lanst, uh, which means that I would probably make, like, I don't know, $1.50. And then yeah, I'd spend $1 per mile on fuel because it's, those loads are very tall and heavy. And it's always windy here. And right now it blows uh, from uh, northeast, and I'm driving uh, east and south, so it's a constant struggle. I just uh, changed my status, you know, avail available status. I said uh, available on Monday, because today's Friday. I said available on Monday in Fargo, North Dakota, looking for a load to Ontario, Canada. Uh, because agents, last their agents, they can see them, right? And then I sent an email to all agents uh, like I usually work with. There was like maybe, I don't know, 15 people, 20 people I, I deal with on a regular basis. I, I already have the email addresses, you know, in my computer. And I said, truck available, you know, Fargo, North Dakota, 500 mile radius going to 200 mile radius of uh, Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Let me know. And I started driving. It's uh, six hours, 600 kilometers, about 360 miles. I had to buy some uh, overpriced Saskatchewan fuel, dollar forty a liter, which is uh, five thirty per gallon U.S. But actually, it's a bit cheaper because Canadian dollars now uh, is, is cheaper. So maybe it's like five bucks per gallon, you know. But what do you do? The truck cannot run empty, right? So I bought two hundred liters, or roughly what seventy gallons, you know, not that bad. That should last me till Fargo, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Fill up probably at Love's over there because Love's gives us uh, eight cents uh, off per gallon. While the uh, petrol over there, it's not the cost plus site. It only we only get I think like three cents per gallon. So I don't like that. So I, I'd rather drive to the next exit on I-25 where the Flying J is, and that's where the Love's is. Just you know, like one mile south of uh, I-94. And then I can get four cents more per gallon. But Petro is a great truck stop. I love it just to park there, you know, and maybe do some repairs when I need them. Because there's a coffee shop, McDonald's, there's everywhere. Well, you guys know the drill. I go through there quite often. And uh, my phone just rang, and the same agent uh, who gave me the, uh, the farm tractor load says she has a load of machinery somewhere from uh, Minnesota going to New Brunswick, Canada. Like pays like over three bucks a mile. I, I didn't want to go that far, but heck, if it pays that much, you know. She said, okay, let me talk to the, to, to him. I'll talk to him and he let me know if the load is available. And they always say him or her, meaning that there's another broker, of course, involved, right? But. So far, I have not heard the uh, confirmation, but if that's uh, if I get that loads, I'll be going to New Brunswick, which is uh, south and east of uh, Quebec, and then I'll find something coming back to Ontario. And I activated the hotspot on my smartphone and uh, hooked, hooked up my laptop to that Wi-Fi and checked my email. And all of a sudden, in my driver, you know, like my work email, I see um, there's like a bunch of messages in the spam folder. And I open those, and there's uh, one message from a guy that uh, is asking me questions about my step deck trailer. What the heck? It turns out the server he was using uh, uh, often has been sending spam messages to Google, and that's why they. Uh, marked that as spam, which in fact it was not, so the guy was asking me specific questions, and I looked at the date, and the date is uh, March 25th, <laughs> and today it's April 26th or 25th or something, and I, you know, but I decided to answer him, just, uh, you know, he, wa he, was, he wanted to know dimensions, like upper deck, lower deck, height, you know, side, uh, diocese, uh, 
stuff like that. So I sent him a reply, and he got back to me, so he was still interested, but uh, I don't know. Uh, he was asking me about the payments, and uh, we exchanged two more emails, and that's it. Everything went quiet. So no more takers, even though I have advertising going everywhere, you know. It's hard to get rid of the least equipment because people are afraid of that much, uh, that many payments left. Which brings us to the topic of the previous uh, heavy haul rent, the truck. And I can tell you as my own uh, bookkeeper uh, slash vice president slash uh, head carpenter, it would not make any sense to get a new truck right now because I'm pulling a step deck, right? I can make the same money whether it's a 20 year old truck or it's a brand new truck it would not make me any more money so the only reason to uh, change trucks is uh, you know okay I, I can save on repairs uh, I can say pro fuel mileage but you know it's an open trailer right uh, I'm not gonna save much in fuel well maybe repairs but I already you know changed pretty much everything on this truck except some, you know, small stuff. So the only big reason for me would be, you know, how I can make more money, that's what I'm looking for, you know, just how can I increase my revenue? And number one is the trailer. Number one, I can get a different trailer, right? And then I can get, if I get a four axle truck for that, let's say, low boy trailer, then I can make more money, right? But just changing trucks, I do not believe in that. Uh, there's nothing wrong with this truck, you know, it's, uh, people are calling it names on YouTube, but if you drive this truck, if you're a driver, and I put you behind the seat, and you push the accelerator into the floor, I guarantee it that you will be smiling for the rest of the day, okay? There's lots of power. This truck, it's amazing. It looks like a basic international, but because I upgraded so many parts, you know, it pulls like crazy, especially with a 373 ratio. So, I don't know. The only big drawback is that, uh, yeah, it does break down. There's no warranty, so everything is, uh, all expenses come out of my own pocket, but, you know, it's my truck, it's paid for, and now since I got rid of the flatbed, uh, they took off the security of it, right? So I can sell it anytime I want, so it's now totally, no one has uh, rights for this truck except me, besides me, right? Because before when I had a flatbed, they took this as, uh, they used this as security, right? So it was like kind of like a mortgage. Uh, I wasn't able to sell it. Now I can do whatever I want. I can trade in, I can sell, you know, I can uh, drive it into a lake. Whatever I want, it's my own truck, my own piece of equipment, which can still make lots of moolah. Okay, so we're not changing trucks until we change trailers. So that agent that uh, promised me a good load from uh, Midwest to uh, New Brunswick it's actually gonna call me back and she disappeared. And then uh, two hours later, I, I'm in Minot, North Dakota. And this guy sends me an email and then he calls me and he says he got a load in Kansas going uh, pretty much right to my uh, home area in Ontario, like near Hamilton, Ontario. That's where the load delivers. But uh, it's 1,100 miles from from Minot, straight south. So I gotta change change my uh, GPS. Sorry, because I was I wanted to go to Fargo, you know, just relax a little bit of the truck stop there. But Fargo is uh, southeast, right? There will be a whole bunch of extra miles. So and this guy says, oh yeah, I can pay you uh, 38.50. Okay. And he called me and said, okay, fine, I'll do it. It's, it's, it's pretty light, some uh, two, two containers or some uh, machinery parts or something. But 
I cannot go through Detroit. I gotta cross in uh, New York, you know, from into Fort Erie, which is about, I think, 200 extra miles, and then you gotta pay toll on I-90 New York. But that's how they, they, they set it up, you know, customs. I said, okay, because I have not heard from this other lady for like three hours. Okay, I'll do it. And the guy said, okay, I can give you the trip number right away and I'll send you a confirmation by email in a, in a short while. Okay, and as soon as I, uh, as soon as I uh, hang up the phone, I, I uh, reprogram my GPS. So now I'm going straight south on the Highway 83 into South Dakota, Nebraska, you know, stuff like that. My phone rings and that uh, lady that I talked to uh, three hours ago says, uh, Serge, we got the load. <laughs> I said, where have you been? I just talked to this guy and uh, I thought, you said you'll call me back in 15 minutes. Now I, I already booked this uh, other load. And of course she's very upset because that, that one pays like six grand. You know, and uh, these guys, the uh, girls, they get commission, right? And she says, well, but he did not answer me for like for two hours. I said, well, you should have told me, right? And she's like, Sergey, come on. I said, okay, let me call that guy because this one pays more and there's much shorter deadhead because it picks up near Minneapolis and I can still go to Fargo, right? And it's straight uh, southeast of Fargo. So I call back that guy and he's, of course, he's angry now and I say, hey, I promised my truck uh, before you to this other lady, but I thought it was canceled. And he's like, okay, so you're not available. Boom. And he yeah, hang, hang us up, hangs up the phone. And this guy often has, uh, you know, good loads. So I don't want to lose, uh, lose, uh, you know, a relationship with him because I did lots of loads for him in the past. So I just sent him an email. I apologize. I said, I'm sorry for the mix-up. And uh, I'll be happy to help you out uh, next time. So hopefully he's not going to be too angry. But uh, so now I'm booking this one. So... Loading Monday in Minneapolis, uh, Minnesota, and I'll be heading to uh, New Brunswick, Canada. You know, and it's uh, like 25,000 pounds, you know, just three pieces of machinery, like my favorite uh, load, and pays very well, you know, so why not? Now I can uh, finally uh, maybe put a dent in my uh, Project 9400 uh, thing and maybe do another video, maybe, you know, start those upgrades. If you saw my Project 9400 video, that was the pro things I wanted to do on the truck. And now I might have the money to, uh, to pull it off. This is I-94 uh, freeway eastbound uh, towards Fargo, about uh, 70 miles away. My speed is uh, 100 kilometers an hour. IPM is uh, 1380, approximately 1380. And average mileage is 9.1, which in reality probably means about uh, 8. And I'm doing good on boost, see about 10. That's pretty high uh, for an empty truck, but there's a very strong And that's it, I'm at the petrol truck stop in uh, Fargo and right across the driveway, driveway from me, check this out, like a very cool looking uh, International, the same make as mine, uh, only this one has uh, aerodynamic mirrors, it has uh, dual stacks on the sides, right, and the best part is that uh, uh, moose bumper. See, it's much uh, bigger, like in terms of height, than the regular bumper, and uh, makes the truck uh, more aerodynamic because it closes the gap and under the engine. Looks pretty cool. But those are, I know, those are probably more with like three grand, you know, where a basic uh, bumper you can get a 20-inch bumper for like seven hundred dollars, you know. But it does look cool. Hmm. Anyway, so yeah, I'm uh, I'm gonna take a, a 34 hour reset.
to get back all my uh, logbook hours because I've been driving you know, to Washington and back to, to Saskatchewan to here so I've been running low on hours but I've been all legal just that now it's a good time to reset everything get some rest and then on uh, Sunday I'm gonna stay here till Sunday and then I'll leave for uh, Minneapolis that's where I'm loading it's a suburb of uh, Minneapolis uh, what is it, St. Paul, Minnesota? Um, and I'm loading Monday. It's going to be one exciting trip to New Brunswick. Thanks for watching. Be safe.